Hey guys, Jimmy here with One Road. So it's been a while since I've made a video on my channel and I'm sorry about that. I just have a lot of things going on at my house, but I've finally been able to get through that stuff and start filming more videos for this channel. <laughs> So thanks for sticking around and watching and subscribing and hitting the thumbs up and maybe following me on Instagram at One Road Garage. Today, we are gonna be working on my 1995 GMC Suburban and what we're doing has to do with the tires. I'm going to be rotating the tires and I have not done this on this truck myself. I took it to a shop once and had them do it. They checked out the tires and said that they were great and had tons of tread life left on them. But since then, I've towed many thousands of miles, I've driven across the country, and I know that it's time to rotate them. One thing that I'm kind of noticing now that I never really noticed before is I can hear the tire hum a little bit louder than I used to. I don't know if that's just for some reason in my head and I'm just noticing it a lot more now, or if it's a reality and maybe the rubber is getting a little bit harder on these tires. So even though these tires are in fantastic shape and have tons of tread life left on them, I'm going to look at the date these tires were made and we're gonna see if we can tell when they were made and how old they are. And speaking of that, I'd like to know if there are any of you guys out there who know a lot about tires, know how long they should last regardless of the tread wear. And so if there are any of you out there, please comment below and let me know. So first things first, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the back end on jack stands. Then I'm gonna come up here and jack up this front driver's side tire. I'll take this tire off as well as the rear tire. I'm gonna take the front driver's side tire and go ahead and move it to the back. But this tire I'm gonna place on the front passenger side and the rear passenger tire is gonna be placed on the front driver's side. So it's gonna be kind of like a cross pattern from the rear but the fronts are gonna go straight back. So this is my jack. I actually got this jack from Sears a few years ago for like a Christmas deal they had going on. This jack, which is a three ton floor jack, along with the two jack stands for, I don't know, I think it was sub $100. So I thought it was a pretty decent deal. I gotta get this thing jacked up, but the problem is, is that my uh, distance here I can travel with this handle is so short, this might take a while. And be annoying. All right, so I got my flathead screwdriver here and I'm gonna go ahead and pop off the cover for the lug nuts. I try to never lay it down on the ground like that because the ground tears these things up. Once that cover is removed, we have access to our lug nuts and I'll be using this 22 millimeter socket as well as my uh, Pittsburgh Harbor Freight half inch breaker bar. This thing makes, uh, the job a lot easier than using a normal ratchet. All right, so I am jacking it up off the floor uh, using the lower control arm. Now that I have it off of the ground, I can loosen the uh, lug nuts all the way, take the tire off. And the same process applies here. Get that baby off. All right, let's get this tire off. And rolled around to the front. Okay guys, so this tire was uh, on the back passenger, now it's going on the front driver. 
And I just wanted to show you how to tell how old your tires are. So in order to tell how old your tires are, you basically come to this DOT number. There's a series of numbers and letters, um, but what you wanna look for are the last four. In this case, my last four are 3112. And what that means is this tire was made in the 31st week of the year of 2012. So doing a little math, it is 2018 now, which means that these tires are roughly six years old. That I think is okay. The tread wear on these is still, I mean, they still look like new practically. Um, I was doing a little bit of research online and apparently like Michelin and some other companies were saying that it's hard to tell when tires are going to expire and it really has to do with kind of their environment that they're in. Are they always outside? Are they always being baked by the sun? Do you park your car in the garage all the time? Um, and what just general types of conditions that they are running through, not to mention obviously tread wear. Um, but these tires are always parked in a garage and this truck isn't driven a whole heck of a lot. All right, now that my tire's off, this is a great opportunity to look over my brakes, check my uh, rotors as well as the pads and make sure that everything looks okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right, now that we got the tire over the, the lugs there, we're gonna go ahead and hand tighten a couple of these to hold the tire on. We'll just get them snug so that the tire is uh, sitting square or centered, I should probably say. You can see on these lugs, they're tapered and that allows you to get the tire uh, Perfectly centered. Next thing I'm going to use is going to be my click type torque wrench. It's a Pittsburgh version. And again, that's uh, Harbor Freight for those of you who don't know or may not know. Um, but this is a half inch torque wrench. These things get really good reviews online. You guys should look it up if you uh, don't know, but they're very easy to use and they're cheap. I got this thing for I think 10 bucks or 11 bucks or something like that. And like I said, they get great reviews. You can see the markings there for torque and foot pounds. And I went ahead and looked up the spec on the lug nuts for this truck and it is about 120 foot pounds. So what I'm gonna do is zero this thing out. You can see the zero mark there, hopefully. And then you simply twist until you get up to the 120 foot pound mark. And you can see I'm about there. You can hopefully make out the 120 number there and the zero and the top of this handle is right where the, the 120 mark tells me I should be. So hopefully you guys can make that out. I'm gonna go plus one for good measure. And the next thing you do on this torque wrench is you're gonna tighten down this little nut here. So this torque wrench is set and good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the truck to let the tire touch the ground right there. And we will go ahead and crank on these, but you're not going to want to go full torque yet. You just kind of want to go in a star pattern and uh, make sure that everything is tightening evenly. I just went and grabbed my three inch extension because the uh, ratchet handle was touching the tire. So that should help me out here. So just go in a star pattern. You just want to make sure, the whole point of this is to make sure that you're not uh, putting the tire on crooked, essentially. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is 121 pound-feet of torque per the spec that I read online anyway. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put my cover back on. And this one's done. Unfortunately, with this 95, we have the good old drum brakes and uh, I'm not too excited about uh, getting these things ready to rock. I know they are torched. I've been hearing them for a long time. So uh, these things definitely have to be swapped out and changed. I'm, I'm curious how bad the inside of this drum is. We'll just have to take that off and look, but 
I know there are kits out there uh, where I can, without welding, swap this entire assembly for disc brake conversion. So um, if any of you guys know anything about that, comment below. I'd like to know your opinions on that, if it's worth doing, if it's totally not worth doing. Gosh, I hate these things. I've never in my life have I changed one of these. I've always had vehicles in between their life cycle, but in this case, I have to get these things all set up and, and uh, that's gonna be very soon. I'm just about done with this tire rotation, but I wanted to show you, I went ahead and applied some anti-seize to all the lugs and also where the lug nuts meet the rim. I just kind of painted it inside there. And the reason for doing that was to make sure that I could properly get these lug nuts off of here in the future. And also I feel like that little bit of lubrication might help these things to seat in really well. Now the tire is still off the ground, um, but what I'm doing is I'm putting a wedge under there. So you just shove that sucker in there and you should be able to get these things torqued down. And again, you don't want to just torque it to spec on the first shot. You want to go ahead and do it in a star pattern if you can. Okay, that one's torqued. Let's see. The tire rotation on this 95 Suburban is done. There was a couple tires that I had to go ahead and take the lug nuts back off like this uh, front driver's side in order to put the antices back on the threads and then thread everything back up. So that sucked, um, but it's all done. Let me know what you guys do. Do you put anti-seize on your lug nuts or do you go as far as putting a thread locker on there? I also wanted to show you guys a couple things. Number one is these new work gloves I just got. I love these things. I've been using them for years and years and uh, you can get a three pack like this at Costco. Um, these gloves are absolutely amazing. I think this was about $20 I think for three. So that's not a bad deal at all. This is my last set of my last uh, three pack. I've been using them for a lot of yard work and you can see I've finally worn some holes through them. So they are on their way out, but I still will use them for yard work, but I cannot recommend these enough. And if you guys do already use these, comment below, let me know. I do have another set of Oxbeam LEDs uh, going in to my other Suburban, my 2003. So these suckers uh, should be going in and on video uploaded within the next week or so. Also, as a side note, uh, nothing to do with cars or anything, but this thing is just freaking awesome. Bought myself a DeWalt. Uh, this is a DWE 304 on Amazon. It was only about 69 bucks. Uh, reciprocating saw, sorry, I don't know if I said that. Um, I do have the pruning blade in there because I've been using it a lot around the house, the yard work. But this thing is awesome. And if you guys remember that chainsaw that I uh, had rebuilt on my channel, I sold that thing and paid for this and then some. So pretty stoked on that because this thing is going to be a lot more useful to me than a chainsaw would and I can do pretty much everything with the chainsaw with this thing that I would have been able to do with the chainsaw. So that's awesome. Other than that, I do have a couple parts that will be going on the 03 Suburban. All three of the pulleys, the, the idler pulley and the tensioner pulleys uh, for the air conditioner and also for just the standard uh, tensioner and idler pulley for the motor. So um, I'm gonna be replacing all of those on video very soon. You can see this is just a standard idler pulley. And here's the bigger tensioner pulley for the, uh, this is the actual main tensioner pulley for the motor. And again, this one is for the air conditioning system because if you don't know, the uh, AC system runs its own belt. And this is the belt. So look at this guy. This is supposed to be a, uh, an extremely long lasting heavy duty belt. You can see the model number there if you're curious, but I will put a link to all this stuff down in the description below this video. Oh, one other thing I just wanted to uh, show you guys was this stuff, motor coat. Um, if you haven't heard of this, look it up. Uh, also, you can look up a product called Best Line, and I think there's one called TVT, and all three of those are pretty much the same thing. Uh, they do the same thing, which is hyper lubricate. They bond to the metal. You just have to watch the videos on these things, guys. Pretty amazing. I think there's more Best Line videos out there than any of them, but uh, this stuff is available actually in your local uh, you know, auto parts stores. So this is something that's very cheap to buy on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description below for this too. Uh, but I can't tell you really what it does so much as I can say, just go look up some videos. 
This stuff is amazing at what it does and could potentially save a motor um, under, the, under the right conditions, I guess. I can't wait to put that stuff in. I did go and pick up a bunch of, uh, you can see I have two boxes, so six 12 quarts of Mobile One 5W30, fully synthetic from Costco. Again, that was on sale there. I got a lot of stuff going on here, guys. I'm just trying to get these trucks ready because I will be making a very large road trip with both of them towing, trailers, and all that good stuff. So I just wanna make sure that they are ready to go, ready to roll, no issues, brakes are all good. I wanna change all the fluids get that motor coat and everything. And uh, hopefully these trucks will be good to go for a long time to come. Anyways, guys, if you have any comments for me, if you didn't like anything I did, or you did like things that I did, comment below, let me know. Let me know what you think. Hit the thumbs up. Sorry if my hat's crooked, I feel like it's crooked. Um, hit the thumbs up for me and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget that little bell icon if you wanna be notified the next time I upload videos. Thanks guys for watching again. I'm Jimmy with One Road here and peace out.